The Cosro Cup is made of transparent and reflective materials, rock crystal, garnet, glass and gold. Normal 3D imaging processes find it very difficult to deal with such materials because the camera or laser scanner cannot easily find the surface. So we had to investigate different ways of scanning these materials, let alone how to make a model in a transparent material that can imitate the rock crystal, the clear, pure quartz. To tackle the scanning problem, the cup needed to be covered with a substance that can form a detectable surface. For such an immensely valuable ancient object that it needs to be handled with extreme care, this immediately presents some problems. A substance used in conservation called cyclododicane can be sprayed over an object to form a suitable surface. The advantages of this are not only that it's neutral, so it won't react with or harm the cup, but also it sublimates, it goes straight from solid to gas, so it doesn't need to be cleaned off or involve liquid. Another problem was solved by the 3D scanning company Crayoform, who have portable handheld laser scanners, so the 3D image could be created without the cup leaving its home. In using cyclododicane over the surface of the cup, however, we lose the colour information and some of the surface detail. So it's not what you'd want in order to produce an analytical scan for scientific research, but for the purposes of creating a replica for an exhibition, this does a pretty good job. The original Cosro cup was made using very different methods. Quartz is one of the most frequent crystals on Earth. This is also one of the hardest. For the ancient Greek, actually, rock crystal was ice, which has frozen so intensively that it couldn't melt. Al-Biruni, the Persian scholar and polymath, writing in the early 11th century, described contemporary sources of rock crystal. He mentions the Alps, the land of the Franks, but also that rock crystal came into Basra and Cairo, the two main centres of production, from, among other places, Iran, Western Arabia, Northwest Africa, the Maldives and Sri Lanka. But large and very clear pieces of rock crystal likely came from Madagascar. Actually, since prehistory until today, a rock crystal has to be worked using a technology based on abrasion. Because rock crystal is brittle and uh, very fragile, it's impossible to shape it using hammering techniques, like a sculpture would do for soft stone, like marble with a chisel and hammer. You cannot do that with rock crystal. And also because this is a very hard material, it's harder than any metal. So it has to be cut, shaped, drilled, or pierced using a harder material, like uh, natural emery, for example, but uh, also corundum and uh, diamond. So these uh, emery pieces or diamond were crushed into abrasive powders. And uh, all the uh, tools which were used afterward, uh, most of the time in a soft metal, were used with the abrasive powders. All the details of the decoration was uh, realized using series of cutting discs or drill bits. For example, on the Cup of Salomon, the little dots that you can see on the sword were done with a rounded drill bit, extremely small, a few millimeters in diameter. And some of the cutting discs could be extremely small as well. The surface of the rock crystal has to be smooth and polished, to erase all the manufacturing traces generated by uh, the first operation, but also to regain the natural transparency of rock crystal. In the 6th and 7th century, the Sasanian hardstone carver uh, used rock crystal, but not that much. Pieces like the Cup of Salomon were using quite big pieces of rock crystal, very clear, are just almost um, non-existent. This is a unique piece and all the material, the rock crystal, the garnet and the green glass were worked using the same technology. So probably they were made in the same workshop. That's extraordinary. Our version of the Cosro cup is made of a decidedly different material, a transparent polymer resin only recently developed for 3D printing. The model is printed in layers, each cured in UV light, layer by layer, 
and each layer just 16 microns, that's 0.016 millimetres high, thinner than a human hair. The model is supported by a base during printing, which afterwards is broken off by the 3D printing specialists at Industrial Plastic Fabrications Limited. In the next and final instalment of this series, we'll see how the model was coloured and gilded to imitate the original.